Hi there, this is Lauren Kimball for ANI150 and today I'm going to walk you through how to build a keyboard in Maya. Now to begin, you're going to want to download these images from the Dropbox. First image should be of the top view of a keyboard and the second image should be the side view of a keyboard. When you have those images ready, go ahead and open up Maya and create a new project. Now if you already have your project 3 well underway, and you want to include the keyboard in that existing project, you can just go ahead and click Set Project, set it to your Project 3, and follow along these steps using that directory. Otherwise, to create a new project directory, click on Project Window. This will pop up. You click New, name it however you want. You can just call this, oops, let's try that again. Type in Keyboard. I'm going to set mine to the desktop because that'll be easier for me to locate and click Accept. Then I'm going to minimize Maya, and you will see on my desktop there is a keyboard folder. So let's go ahead and open up that folder, and then we're going to access the Source Images folder. Remember that anything you want to bring into, into Maya, like an image plane, needs to go into the Source Images folder, not the Images folder. Images folder is for things that are rendered out of Maya. Source Images folder are for things that we want to bring into Maya. So I'm going to double click the source images folder and drag those JPEGs in and then close out of the file and open up Maya again. All right, so to bring in my image planes, I'm going to want to attach them to the corresponding camera that that, that image plane represents. So when we looked at the pictures, we saw that we had a front view and we had a side view. So I'm going to want to tap my space bar, which will activate my four main panels, and I'm going to look for my top view and just click spacebar again so that my top view is now dominating my, uh, my screen. I'm then going to go over here to View, Image Plane, Import Image, and immediately it's going to take me to the Source Image folder where I stored my keyboard references. Now if you are going in and opening up an Image Plane file and you see an empty source images folder, it could be that you didn't set your project correctly. So if this isn't showing up right, make sure that you went to File, Set Project, and that you set the appropriate directory. Otherwise, Maya's not going to know where to find it. So I'm going to go over here again, go to View, Image Plane, Import Image, and I'm going to look for that top view and press Open. All right, once I'm done, I'm going to tap my space bar and I'm going to tap again over my side view and I'm going to repeat the process. So I go view, image plane, import image, side view. All right, there we go. Now if I go into my perspective view, I can see both my image planes uh, are in my scene. Now remember, if you accidentally forget to go to the proper viewport and you attach an image plane to your perspective view, Every time you move the camera, the image plane is just going to toggle with your camera, and that's not what we want. We want them to stay fixed in our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, make sure that my two image planes are lining up. So you'll see that my side view is actually quite a bit bigger than my top view. So I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to scale it in. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that and try to make it so that the edges of the keyboard on my side view match my top view. I don't quite yet. Maybe move it a little this direction. That's pretty darn close. Okay, it's important that our image planes, that they, um, they kind of accurately have the same proportions because if they don't, then whatever I model in my top view will be, won't, won't align with what I have in my side view. So after I've done that, I'm going to grab my top view uh, image plane, and I'm going to drag it downward. And I'm going to grab my side view and move that to the side. It's because what I model is going to be here in the middle, and um, I don't need to necessarily have these intersecting in my work area. So before I begin modeling, I'm going to select both of these, and I'm going to make sure that my channel box is showing. Now, if you don't have the channel box showing, you just press Control A on your keyboard. This is the attribute editor. Control A again, this is our channel box. At the bottom of our channel box, we have our display layer, 
and I'm going to go ahead and click this button to the far right and that will create a new layer and whatever I had selected, which are these two image planes, are going to immediately be um, applied to this display layer. So if I click off the V, I can see that both of these image planes are attached to this empty layer. I'm going to go ahead and double click that layer and I'm going to call these my image planes. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click this third box. So right now if I grab these, uh, they get selected. But if I click this twice, they're still visible in my scene, but now I can't accidentally click on them while I'm working. So you want this R to be showing up in the third box. All right. Okay, so to begin modeling, I'm going to start with just a polygon primitive, ideally a cube. And then I'm going to go click spacebar. And one thing I notice right off the cuff is the cube is showing up here in the top view like I want it to, but it's not showing up in my side view. And the reason that is is that my camera is actually over here aiming this direction on the x-axis. So my cube is technically behind the image plane. So to fix that, I'm going to turn the R off on the image plane layer so I can grab this side view. And I'm just going to pop it the other direction. So now I can see the cube. And then I'm going to go ahead and relock that so that I don't accidentally select it. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with the top view. I'm going to grab this cube, and I'm going to go ahead and scale it widthwise to the keyboard. And then lengthwise. Or I guess this would be width and the other one was length, but you know, you get it. I'm just going to basically scale this. Now, to make sure that this is matching my reference image, I'm going to go over here to shading and I'm going to activate X-ray. That way it drops the opacity of my mesh and I can see the keyboard behind it. Now, it looks like it's lining up pretty decently. Maybe it could be a little closer on this end. Instead of just playing with the scale. I'm going to right click and activate the vertex mode and just scoop these four vertices over here or vertices over here and I'm just going to budge them to the right a little bit. That'll be much easier than trying to grab the hole. And there we go. Looks pretty good. Now I'm not going to at this point worry about matching my side view just yet. Uh, I'm going to maybe do a little bit. Let's go let me take back a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and activate X-Ray. I'm going to let this part match. So I'm going to bring that in. I'm not going to worry about this bottom portion right now, but I want to make sure this top bit is, is lining up nicely. There we go. All right, so before I worry about the rest of the side view of the keyboard, I want to worry about these trays that the keys are going to sit in. So I'm going to go to shading, wireframe on shading, because that's going to be important for this step. I want to see the wireframe of this mesh. And I'm going to go ahead and hold down shift, right click, and activate my insert edge loop tool. Now, make sure that you double click this tool and click reset, just in case you accidentally have multiple edge loops or the uh, equal edge multiplier activated, because we use that in other lessons. And sometimes you forget to turn it off. I don't want that activated. I just want the freeform insert edge loop tool. All right, so with the edge loop tools settings reset, I'm just gonna go over here and click on one side of my cube, and I'm going to line this up so that it aligns with the top of these key trays here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do that again with the bottom. Do that again here. It's a little tricky to select, there we go so that this next section has a, you know, an edge that represents where that part stop starts, and one down here, okay? Now notice that there are, there's a little break between these two little trays, so I'm going to go ahead and add one here to align at the bottom of this middle, uh, smaller tray, and then I'm going to add one here for this uh, for these little arrow keys, and one more time right about here. Okay. Now that I've got all of these horizontal edge loops laid, I want to go ahead and add the vertical ones. So I'm going to go over here, 
and add an edge loop that aligns with my escape key and the rest of the keys next to it. Add one to the other side of my escape key. I'm going to do that again over here. Everywhere these little miniature trays toward the top experience a break, I want to make sure there's an edge loop next to them. Let's do that again here. And again right here. And here. And here. And here. And I'm going to want to add one right here to kind of represent where the arrow keys are. And then right here. Oh, sorry, over here. Almost missed one. Here and there. So it looks like that's a grand total of 21 edge loops. So I'll just leave this on a screen for a second so you can see it. Let's go ahead and turn off that image plane. There, so you can kind of see where all those edge loops laid out. All right, so now that I have those laid out, I'm gonna press Q because that's gonna grab my select tool. I don't wanna keep adding edge loops. If I start clicking on things, assuming I have my select tool, I'll start adding edge loops willy-nilly. So make sure you press Q or click this arrow to deactivate the edge loop tool. And let's go ahead and save our progress. So file, save scene as. We'll call this keyboard 001. Um, I'll just call it the block out. So I'm blocking out the key tray. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to select the faces that represent all these different key trays. Okay, so let's go back to the top view. I'm going to right click and I'm going to activate face mode. And I'm just going to click where the escape key is, hold down shift, click, click, click. Now over here where there's these three, I'm going to actually hold down tab. And notice that the, um, the mouse turns from the, the cursor to this little circle with a plus sign. And that just allows me to grab multiple assets. It basically activates this tool right here, which is like our, or not this tool, but this one, the paint selection tool. It's basically a shortcut to the paint selection tool. So then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hold down tab again and just select all of these boxes that make up the larger key tray. All right, cool. Let's do that again here and here and here. All done. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go over here, make sure I don't have anything else accidentally selected. I can press four wireframe mode it looks good five back to shaded view I'm gonna press W for my arrow hold down shift and just extrude this down a little bit there we go so that represents a good representation of the key tray all right so now that I got my key tray working I want to go ahead and revisit the side of my keyboard and I want to uh, basically grab the whole bottom and extrude downward to finish kind of making this shape below it. Now the reason I didn't do this in the beginning was if I went ahead and extruded and made the shape of the keyboard then I would have had extra edge loops to look at while I was trying to make these keyboard trays. I didn't like that so that's why I'm going in this order. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off x-ray I'm going to go to vertex do I want vertex mode. No, no, I want to go to face mode. And I'm going to use my marquee tool and just select. And it looks like I select everything. But if I hold down control, I can deselect everything on the side. And when I go to space bar, I see that I only have the bottom of my tray selected. Definitely toggle upward and make sure you didn't accidentally grab any of the faces inside the key tray. You just want to have the bottom of your keyboard. Okay, go back over here, hold down shift, and drag this down. Now I want to go ahead and turn my x-ray back on. I just didn't want all these extra edges to look at. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink this in. Okay, now Notice that when I did that, it looks really good on the side, but from the front view, which we don't have an image for the front view, 
the keyboard definitely doesn't have this deep of a slant. So I'm just going to grab the red box here and adjust the length a bit so that it matches. That looks much better. Now you'll notice that oh, with this, it's not quite lining up anymore with the keyboard. So what I mean by that is I took this image and I rotated it so that the top of the keyboard was flat. But if we turn off the polygon mesh for a second, you'll see that this actually slants as part of the keyboard's design. So we need to bring that back. So this would have probably been an easier thing to do without all these edge loops, but that's okay. We can still make this happen. And how we're going to do that is I'm going to go to vertex mode and I'm going to lasso all the ver vertices that make up the bottom. Okay. And then I'm going to tap D on my keyboard. I'm going to hold down V and I'm just going to snap this over. Let go of V and tap D. So all I did was I, grabbed the uh, the pivot point for my move tool and I moved it over here to this edge. I'm then going to grab rotate and I can rotate all the vertices to match along this um, along this this edge of the keyboard. I'm going to go ahead and grab my scale tool and I can kind of scale this out and I'm just getting this all to align to the image behind it. So if I turn off my, my x-ray, you can see that this is now looking more like the keyboard reference. Cool. Now eventually when I'm done modeling this keyboard, oh no, I just realized something. Oh no, I think that I got this backward. <laughs> yeah, I think this image, um, I think these are the top keys and I think this is the space bar. So I think I did this quite backward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to undo what I just did. And I'm going to grab this image. So let's turn off the image plane, grab the, or the image planes um, display layer. I'm going to go back to object mode, which is F8. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to rotate this image 180 degrees. So once I've started to rotate it, I can go in the channel box and make it 180, or not 180, but 360. Okay, what is it doing? Oh, it's already set to 90. So negative 90. There we go. Okay, cool. So you, what I did wrong, in case you're not clear on that, is that the slant is supposed to be aiming toward the space bar because ultimately it's going to cause the keyboard to lift up a little bit when it's laying on a flat surface. So let's go ahead and remedy that. I'm going to go over here in my side view and if I go under x-ray I can see how that changed. I'm going to go ahead and go to vertex, select all these vertex vertices at the bottom, tap D as in dog, hold down V like violin, and I can snap to the far right of these vertices, let go of V and tap D again. And now I can move everything so that it all moves together. All right, and then I can scale as well so I can make sure that this image aligns up with the reference. Maybe, should move it back a little too. I make this match as best as I can. And then maybe scale again. There we go. Looks pretty good. All right. So let's go back to object mode. And you can see, there we go. That's how I want it to look. All right. Perfect. All right, so the next step is to actually bring in the keys. Now that we got the keyboard base looking good, uh, let's go ahead and delete history. And let's also freeze transformations. And actually, before we go making the keys, why don't we just finish up this tray? I think I'm going to go ahead and add a bevel to it. So I'm going to press Control B. And now you'll see that this poly bevel option opens up 
when I select it, you can see there's a slight bevel on everything. Now, typically you wanna be careful just adding a bevel to everything instead of selecting very specific edges, but it works really well with this keyboard because, or this, you know, this keyboard base, because it's basically just a big cube with a couple of cube indentions. Everything stays four-sided. If you aren't careful with the bevel, you can sometimes create ingons, but with something this polygonal, for lack of a better term, something that doesn't really alter that far from the standard cube, it shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and up the segments to two and take a look at it. I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and press three, and three gives us a smooth preview. And yeah, I think that's looking really good. I think we're basically done with, uh, with the keyboard. I'm gonna press one and take it back. And uh, again, delete history and freeze transformations. And let's also make sure that we are going back into our outliner. Oops, sorry, wrong, wrong button, our outliner. And that we're naming everything. So we don't necessarily worry about our image planes per se. If you want to, you could like, this is the top view, so maybe I'd go under and add underscore top and underscore side so I know which image plane is which, but it's really just the assets that you want to be on top of. So I'm going to go ahead and name this uh, keyboard tray. All right. And oh, don't forget to reactivate the lock on this image plane layer so we don't accidentally click that. All right, so let's go ahead and save our progress. We'll go ahead and double click the word outliner to hide the outliner and tuck it away. I'm going to go file, save scene as, and we'll just call this um, keyboard tray complete. All right, next let's start looking at these keys. So I'm going to go to my top view and let's begin with just a cube. And I'm going to bring this cube over here and I'm just going to choose a key to start with. Maybe scale this up a little bit. All right, let's go to our perspective view. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong hotkey. And maybe move this up. I'm going to go underneath this cube and delete the bottom because we're not going to see the bottom of these keys anyway. And I'm going to right click, activate vertex mode, and grab these bottom four vertices. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back into my top view and just scale these out from the middle so that I got kind of a sense of the shape of this key. All right, let's go ahead and go back to our object mode. I'm gonna tap D. And then I'm going to hold down V. And so just as a rehash, D is in dog, and then hold down V is in violin. And I'm going to hold just the Y axis and snap this down and tap D again. So what I've done is I've asked the pivot point to be at the bottom of this key. And then I'm going to go to my side view, and I'm just going to lower this so that it's in the tray. There, see? It's not going through the tray or anything, it's just above it. There we go. And now, let's actually go back to the side view and let's shrink this down. So it's about the size of these keys. Now you gotta be careful because these keys are gonna be a little different based on the perspective view. Like the, the picture that we took is in perspective so the keys are gonna look a little warped. So just do the best you can. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe. Maybe place this a little to the side because again, we got to account for the perspective on this reference image. So just, you know, maybe eyeball it a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks, looks plenty good. All right, let's, uh, let's adjust this little key sum. Let's go ahead and bevel it, control B, and let's add segment of two. All right, and let's go and adjust the fraction 
and take it a little lower, like let's say 0.2. Oh, that looks much better. That's starting to look more like a key. All right, perfect. I'm going to go ahead and name this. Oh, shoot, I keep grabbing the wrong thing. I keep meaning to grab this for the outliner. And let's call this key01. I want to just make sure that we have all of our keys. You could go through and name them all according to what's on them. I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to have them named. I, I, do, I don't want them all to just be, you know, cube, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete my history and freeze my transformations. And I'm also going to go ahead and lay out my UVs. Now I know that's kind of odd because I didn't lay out the UVs on the key tray yet. Why am I laying it out on the key itself? And that's because I plan to duplicate this key to account for all the other keys. And if I lay out the UVs on this key, I will be, whenever I duplicate the key, it's going to automatically duplicate the UVs, meaning that I don't have to sit there and lay out the UVs on each of these individual keys, they'll already have UV maps ready to go. All right, so again, make sure you've frozen transformations and deleted history because remember, if you have any sort of scaling information that's off, it's going to affect the UV maps. So always good to freeze transformations. All right, let's go ahead and lay out the UVs on this key. I'm going to go over here and click on this little box here. You should see it under the poly modeling tab. It represents your UV editor. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and press control one to go to solo mode or isolate mode. Just look at my key. All right. How do I want to go about this? I could probably just get away with an automatic map. So if I go create automatic mapping, and there we go. Uh, I may want to move and sew some of these shells a little bit better. So let's go ahead and grab an edge, shift right click, move and sew. Maybe do that again here, here, and here. And it'll cause a little stretching, but I think I'm going to go ahead and sew these up over here. It's not enough um, stretching that it's going to bother anything. I just think. It'll make for a tighter, cleaner looking map. Remember that you want to kind of choose between, you know, strike a balance between the number of pieces of shells that you have versus distortion, because the more pieces you have everywhere there's an edge, like right here, that's going to show up in the normal map bake. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this new shell and I'm going to shift right click and I'm going to unfold it. And I'm gonna just take a look. And honestly, the distortion is so minimal from sewing that corner up. I'm just gonna keep it. I can also go over here and click this and you can see there's very faint discoloration. It's not really gonna be much of a problem. And uh, I'm just gonna tuck this shell away for now. I don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna go ahead and save my scene. File, save scene as. So I'm going to say at this point, I'm at um, key model UV. So I just remember what I did in this step and save my scene. And I'll close out of my UV editor. And I'm going to press control one and show my keyboard again. All right, and let's go ahead and delete history again. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in a group, control G. So if we look at our outliner, you see that I have the key in a group, and I'm going to call this my keys underscore group. And uh, that way I keep everything nice and tidy in my outliner. All right, so let's go ahead and start duplicating. Now I could just press Control D and drag it, drag it, drag it, but that's not what I want. I want to introduce a new tool. I'm going to go over here to uh, let's see, where is it? It's under Edit, Duplicate Special, and click on the box next to Duplicate Special. Again, that's Edit, Duplicate Special, and click on this box. All right, so Duplicate Special gives you additional options to just manually control D or duplicating something over and over again. I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
let's see. Let's go ahead and look at making number of copies. Let's set this to two. And these translate represents X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to want to translate it on the X axis. Let's just try one. Entering in one and see what happens. Apply. Ooh, okay, that was weird. What happened? Let me try resetting this tool. There we go. All right, let's try again. Um, reset tool. Let's go to number of copies, two. And let's go to translate and type in one and press apply. Why is that offsetting? Oh, oh, I see what's happening. I, I only want one copy. I don't want two copies. Apply. All right, so now I see that I've got two keys. In fact, it'll probably be easier to see if I turn off X-ray. So if I press apply, you can see that it created two keys. I'm going to press undo, though, because it's not offsetting enough. Let's try typing in 1.5. Apply. Well, it's getting closer. I still think there should be a little more distance between those keys. Let's try 1.8. Uh, maybe a little too far. We're getting closer, though. 1.8. Seven. Oh, no, I'm still a little far. So I guess 1.6. Yeah, I think I like that. All right, so let's go back to x-ray mode for a moment and take a look at how many keys we're looking at. So we're not going to count backspace because that's a longer key. Actually, no, let's go ahead and count uh, the backspace because we'll just transform it. So. 1, 2, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So let's go ahead and make 13 keys and apply. Ta-da! Did a pretty good job of matching that. Let's go to our backspace key, and I think this one I'm actually going to name backspace. Oops. or maybe just call it key underscore backspace. Because it's different, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab its, oh, shoot. Um, go to selection mode, grab that key, and press Control-1 so you don't have a bunch of stuff to compete with. Click on vertex and just grab the vertices to the right here. And then press Control-1 again and stretch this out so that it matches the reference. All right, and then we can just go back to F8 back to object mode. And I can go ahead and delete history, freeze transformations on that key. Now you're going to note that this is going to change the UV map, but not to worry. Let's go ahead and look at the UV map for that one key. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not matching anymore. But if I grab this UV shell, I can always unfold it. So shift right click, unfold, and it'll match. Uh, the UV cuts are what's most important. Once you unfold it, it'll match the proportions of the key no matter how you change it as far as length or width. So not to worry. But let's close out of that and press F8 again. And uh, let's turn off X-ray and just take a look. Yeah, it's looking, it's looking pretty darn good, I'd say. Nice. All right, let's do that again, only this time the next row. So let's go to sh shading, x-ray, and I'm going to go ahead and go to edit, duplicate special, and this time I'm going to set this to zero, and I'm going to try typing 1.6 in the y-axis area, 1.6. Let's change the number of copies to one and press apply. And oh, that did not work. What that did was bring it on a y axis, like uh, I, me I messed up. I should have said z axis, my bad. Set that to zero, 1.6 in the z axis. All right, let's see what that does. Oh, that does it. Good, good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab these vertices again, or vertices. Stretch this out, and let's go ahead and name this key tab so we know what it is. All right, then I'm going to grab my key, my first key down here, up here, and I'm going to duplicate it as well. Press apply, and I'm going to move it to the right. Let's go ahead and go shading, x-ray, 
just want to make sure I'm keeping that distance as best I can. All right, I think that'll work. Shading, wireframe on our x-ray. Let's see how many keys we got. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Looks like twelve. So let's go ahead and this time set our um, Z to zero and set that 1.6 in our X box, in the, <laughs> the first box, our X axis box, and set this to 12 and press apply. There it goes. And then let's go over here and, oh shoot, I hate when I do that. Go back to select mode, select that last key, and let's press control one to isolate and grab the vertices on the right. Press control one again and move this over. Okay, I guess this is kind of a slash T. I don't know what I would call this, but I definitely want to change this. Maybe, I wonder if I can use that. Um, nope, won't let me use that as a naming convention. Um, uh, backslash. There we go, we'll call it backslash. All right, let's take a look in the perspective view. Yeah, I definitely like it. You can go ahead and set, start saving this scene. So let's go ahead and name this um, key duplicates, duplicates. And then we'll just carry on. Let's see what the next layer is. So we did tab, let's go ahead and do caps lock. So we're gonna go back into duplicate special. Let's just reset it. And we wanna go ahead and go to our Z box and type in 1.6, apply. And that pushes that down to where the caps lock is. I'll press control one to isolate that, grab the vertices, control one again, and just expand that as much as it needs to be. Cool. When we're done, we'll go ahead and go back to object mode. I'll click on one of the keys up here. Oh, also, good to name that. We'll call this key caps lock. And grab this key. And we'll just let it duplicate down. And let's go and do shading, wire, or x-ray. And we'll just move this over to the right. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's go back to x-ray and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven keys. All right, let's type in eleven and apply. Oops, gosh darn, I don't know what I was thinking. We have to set this back to zero because we're wanting to go this direction now on the x-axis. Apply. Ah, there we go. All right, let's grab that last key. I'm going to press Control-1, right-click, vertice, just move these over to the best that I can. I'm going to go ahead and rename that Enter key. I don't have to, but I like knowing where the stranger, larger keys are at. Looking good. Well, let's keep going. All right, going to grab the caps lock, going to go over here, reset the tool, and I want to move it down. So we're going to go to the last box, type in 1.6 and apply, right click, vertice, and move it over. Cool, cool. When we're done, go ahead and rename it. So this is going to be shift, and there's probably going to be another shift on the other side, isn't there? So we'll call this one shift one. Cool. All right, so now I'm going to just grab one of these keys, bring it on down, gonna eyeball it. X-ray mode. X-ray again. Okay, looks pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten keys. So let's set this to 1.6. Turn the last box to zero, set this to 10, and duplicate special. Oh, hold on, where's the bark? Sorry, my dog. All right, click that last shift key, 
press control one, go ahead and ac access its vertices, control one again, and just stretch that out so it matches the reference a bit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and name this my shift two. All right, let's see how that's looking. Oh, it's looking pretty good. Nice, we're in the home stretch. All right, let's grab our next shift key and edit, duplicate special. Let's reset the tool, set this down to 1.6 and apply. And this one is, these are gonna be a little bit different, aren't they? Because these are kind of elongated keys along the bottom. Let's start with the control key, grab that vert, text mode. Well, let me take a look at this. It looks like from eyeballing that the control key is a little bit longer. Are these regular keys? Are these? They do feel a bit longer, don't they? So I think these two keys are probably the same, um, same width. These three will be the same width as those two. I think the control keys are the ones that are a bit bigger. So what I may do is I'll call this my control one. And then I think I'm just going to press control D and manually move this one over since this is going to be similar and it's already named control two. All right, let's grab this, this Z and press apply. So it moves downward. And just like I suspected, this is going to be a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and go to vertice mode, stretch this out, go back to object mode by pressing F8, and let's reset this, set it to 1.6 on the translate on the X and apply. Ooh, it does not work the same. So I'll just press, I guess I could just leave it, but I could just duplicate it manually and drag it over. Won't worry about special duplicate. In fact, I'm going to turn it off for a bit and duplicate this manually. I'm duplicating manually by pressing Control D, by the way. Okay, and let's go ahead and turn off X ray and just make sure those keys do have a little bit more gap between them, it seems. So maybe. Right, and then we'll just duplicate one more time and this is gonna be our space bar. I'm not gonna worry about naming all these strange keys, but I will go ahead and do the space bar. All right, and I'll press Control S, which saves my scene. Let's zoom out and we can see the keyboard is looking pretty sharp. All right, let's go back up to our top view. We'll grab this, control D, just move this on up into this area. And let's press control D again and move it over to the right. And then we can use our special duplicate again. So let's go to x-ray mode. There's four keys there, so let's go with Duplicate Special, and we'll set three additional keys, Apply, there they go, populating that area. Let's press Control D on the last key and move it over. And do that again. Looks like it's a little off. Let's go ahead and turn off X-Ray. Yeah, it is a little off, so I'm gonna click, Shift-click these four and just kind of budge it a little to the right. I don't want these intersecting the key tray. All right, Control D and move this over. Shading, wireframe on shading. Oh no, I'm sorry, wrong one. I meant to click X-ray. All right, it looks like there's another three, so let's just press apply. And let's make sure that it's not intersecting the side. It is a little bit, so maybe budget slightly to the left. There we go. All right, let's see what we got over here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. That's right. Looks like it's just going to be two additional keys. So let's move this over. 
and set this to two. Apply. There we go, looking very nice. Let's grab these three, duplicate, control D, and move down. And then let's do that again here. Let's set three, and this time we want to go down, so we're going to press zero in the first box and type 1.6 in this box and apply. Oh shoot, that was not what I should have done. My bad, one. Let's type 1.6 again. There we go. Cool, cool. I could probably go in and adjust these a slightly. Okay. And then just, oops, grab this, duplicate down. And duplicate that so that it has one going down. And let's move it this way and add two. Oops, I made the mistake again. I need to remember which direction I'm moving. So it should be 1.6 in the first box if I want to go to the right. So two, apply. Let's go ahead and turn off x-ray. This one probably needs to be budged over a little. And by virtue, probably this one too. No, I like that better. It's a little off, but uh, I'm not gonna be too, too crazy about it. Let me bring this down a smidgen. Yeah, close enough. All right, let's go ahead and take care of this last bit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on X-ray, grab a key, duplicate, and well, this is gonna be cool. So we're gonna duplicate this two that way to the right and then grab all three of these one two three three down and we're going to set this to zero and this to 1.6 okay all right let's make sure these are looking good let's go to yeah that placement looks Pretty nice. Just gotta double check because again the photograph is a little warped. All right, let's go over here and add this 1.6, this to zero. I only want one. Apply. All right, and this one I want to go down, so make that zero. This one 1.6. All right, and this one we're gonna grab the vertices, which you might have to. You might have to grab the key and press control one, isolate it to grab its vertices. That's fine. And let's go ahead and move this down. Cool. And then let's do that again. Move down. It doesn't quite work the same, so we're going to have to eyeball it. I'm not even worried about naming these keys. All right, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, did I already duplicate it? I think I did. Let's undo. All right, apply. That way we have that keeping that distance the same. And this over. And let's grab this key and do the same. I think we're done. Yeah, it looks like this one could be a little less on the length. Let's bring that in. There you go. Oops, what did I just do? Ah, there we go. I think this one should come down a little bit. To match the other keys on the bottom. But it looks like everything is good to go. And after you unwrap and pack, all these keys are ready to UV. Oh, looks like we forgot the escape key. My bad. Duplicate. Move it over. And there we have it. All the keys and the keyboard ready to go, ready to texture. And if we look in our outliner, 
because we put these keys in a group to begin with, we can just collapse that. Now we got our keys and we have our keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and save this scene. We'll just call it mesh complete or whatever you want to call it. I just like making little notes so I remember what I did in which iteration. All right, let's go ahead and grab all these keys and make sure that we deleted their history and freeze transformations. That way, if we move any of these keys, like let's say I just move this away, I can always set it back to zero and it snaps back. That's kind of nice. All right, let's start laying out the UV maps. We want to texture this. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the key tray. This one's going to be easy. All you have to do is automatic it if you want to. It could be as simple as that. Of course, that's going to give you a lot of edges if you do that. So let's see, control one. Another easy thing that you could do would be to make it like one whole mesh. So kind of like we did with the sci-fi crate. I like to go in, create like normal based. Let's see, did that work? I don't think that worked. Let's try that again. Create normal based. It really didn't work. Hmm, strange. Let's try camera based then. That worked. Just make one whole UV shell. This isn't something that's usable, but it can be helpful for thinking about when breaking things up. All right, and now I'm going to basically select edges and start cutting these edges like I would a pizza box, you know? Like if I were gonna break up a pizza box that I was gonna use in recycling, you cut the box up at the edges if you want it to lay flat, right? So I'll go over here and I can press Shift X and that's gonna cut. You can see the cuts that are being made. Go ahead and do that again over here. And go over here, Shift X. Let's double click that edge. Double click that edge. That one didn't work so well. Let's try that again. There we go. Shift X. Cool, cool. Looks nice. Oh, missed one over here. This one didn't quite trail all the way. Double click. Shift X. There we go. All right, and let's double click this. Double click this. I'm going to do that on this side here. Shift X. All right, so now I can grab this like UV shells. And you can see that everything's capable of being broken apart. And some of these are just ready to lay flat. So I can just press Control U and go ahead and unfold these. Now I'm gonna want to uh, arrange and lay out and I can grab these and orient shells so that they rotate nicely. And in the Rotate tool, which is under Transform, I can activate a step snap of 15 degree increments. And that way, when I rotate things, I can make sure that they're rotating cleanly and staying nice and angular. Let's go ahead over here, press Control U as the shortcut for unfolding. We can click Orient Shell. All right, there we go. So those are nice and ready to go. Well, not quite ready to go. We gotta worry about texel density and layout, but we got a good start. All right, let's look at this key tray here that we have left. And uh, I basically want to do the same thing. I just want to go over here, look closely, and grab around these edges. Oops, not that. So 
So I'm grabbing each of these edges on the side and the top loop of each of the little tray indentions and then press shift X to cut and now this is its own separate shell this whole piece I can separate it from the whole and I can press control U to unfold it and I can also orient it so that it's not laying all cattywampus in a weird angle all right and I basically just want to rinse and repeat for each of the trays Oops. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Shift X to cut. I mean, again, you could just automatic map this, but if you do it this way and you put in the time, you can have very nice, clean, organized UV maps. Okay, shift X when you got each of those corners and the top loop grabbed. Again, you should be able to grab it by the UV shell and it should be its own separate thing something that you can press control U and unfold, orient it so that it's not at a strange angle. There we go. So now I just have this shell left. Let's go ahead and go back to edge mode. Let's take care of the big one, the main one right here. Press Q to make that go away. All right, let's go ahead and shift X to cut. You can then grab this shell, control U to unfold, go ahead and orient it. There we go. You know, I do wonder. Hmm. I want to try something. I'm just going to double click. Oops, that didn't work quite like I expected it to. I'm going to try something. I'm going to just grab all the faces here. It's a little bit of an experiment. So I wonder if this would be easier. What if I were to take this and create a camera-based map? Now, I mean, that cuts it out, but it doesn't give me my nice edges, so I'm going to undo that. It was a nice idea. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the edge like I was, save myself some time with that possible shortcut. Shift X, there we go. Grab the shell. We can go ahead and press Control U so it lays out nice and flat. Orient it so that it's not at a strange angle. Hmm, this one's kind of looking a little weird. Oh, I see why. Yeah, that's a problem. So, this is the this is where the arrow keys are, and when I laid it out, these edges kind of intersect. So we're going to fix that. I think we're just going to have to cut, not an extra bit of cutting here. Shift X, and just separate it as a separate shell. I don't think there's any getting around that. All right, let's see if that helped. Control U, unfold, Control U, unfold. That definitely helped.
cool. Yeah, I'm going to try to avoid that warping. Sometimes there's edges that you can't avoid, but it's not a big deal because our keys are going to basically be hiding that seam anyway. So, you know, it doesn't really matter if a normal map has a little bit of a seam there. At least you don't have to worry about, you know, color map seams anymore. It's just normal map seams. All right, let's keep going. Up and down Q, or tap to Q so that I don't have my move tool in the way. Shift X, grab that UV shell, move it down, control U, go ahead and orient it. I'm sure there's probably a hotkey for orient, but I don't know what it is off the top of my head. And just keep going. Get all these trays taken care of. Okay, shift X, or it be in the UV editor when you do that. Grab that shell, control U. Okay, almost done. Oops, didn't mean to grab that one. you, orient it, and move on. Is that really ha oh is that it? Oh no no we're definitely missing one. There's there's one more. We're almost done. Mind you, there's software out there that can make faster work of this. There's also a 3D UV texture tool in here that I don't really use all that much. This method works just fine for me, but you can always explore other methods. And there we go, we got all of our shells laid out. And we can start setting the texel density and laying them out. So what I would recommend for texel density is figure out the main piece that you want to pack. So like this one here. Let's go shift right click and go to layout. I like to go into the layout settings and just make sure you have shell padding and tile padding set to 10. And also make sure that you don't have, actually that should be fine, layout. Uh, that was strange. Okay, let me try that again. I'm going to try resetting the tool. Reset. Okay, I'm not going to worry about most of this stuff. I'm just going to try setting this to 10 pixels by 10 pixels and applying it. There we go, that's what I wanted. I wanted this, actually probably do 5 pixels. There we go. I just wanted this to have some nice padding to it. And let's go over here to transform and let's say git or 
48. Make sure that you have your map set to whatever aspect ratio you're going to be baking or you're going to be uh, texturing at, which is, should be 2048. Get, and that sets this to 54 roughly. Let's grab all of these and set them to 54. There we go. So now we all have the same texel density, which means there's going to be texture uniformity. So I'm going to go ahead and start packing these. Cool, cool. And then all these other pieces, just put them where they where they'll fit. I think these are the side of the keyboard right here. Oh, I don't think that'll work. Hmm. Mm. I guess I could just put it in here. Yeah, they're nice packed. Make sure nothing's overlapping. And it looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, it looks nice and uniform. There doesn't appear to be any stretching. All the squares are nice and aligned. We can always double check. Everything's coming up white. Everything's blue, which means nothing's been flipped. There's nothing overlapping. I think we're good to go on this step. So that is laying out the, the keyboard tray. Now some of you are wondering, well, how are we going to fit the keys on here? Are we going to use UDEMs? Are we going to... No, nope, no, nope. we are going to keep everything within the one-to-one -one space, but we're going to apply different materials. So if the keyboard has a material and the keys have a separate material, they can be in the same space and not interfere with each other, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to delete history, freeze transformations, because remember when you lay out your UVs, you're creating more history. Close out of my UV editor for now, and let's go ahead and save our work. I'm just going to call UV tray. There we go. All right, I'm going to press Control-1, bringing everything back. Let's grab the key group. Let's open up the UV editor. <laughs> All those UV shells are right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, oh, goodness. So what we can do is we could just click... L <laughs> Let's start with pressing Unfold. And you see it's unfolding all of these. So any of the keys that may have been warped or changed. So as you can see, like the space bar is really sticking out now. All right, and then what I'll do is let's just let it lay out. I'm gonna go in and maybe change some of the settings. Let's see what we got. I'll set this to 2048 to match the texture resolution. Non-overlapping is good. Um, translating's fine, don't need to rotate. Go ahead and keep that five uh, pixel padding, and uh, let's see what happens. You can do it, Maya. I believe in you. There we go. Oh, wow, that came out quite nicely, didn't it? All right, let's see if we get what we got in the way of texel density here. Get 76. Uh, let's go with 75, and let's set everything to 75. Okay, it makes it a little smaller. 
but yeah, it seems like everything's fitting just fine. So let's look here. I don't see any stretching. I don't see any overlapping. And everything's flipped in the right direction. So you're pretty much done. Everything's coming up. Coming up daisies. Don't know why I don't see the checkerboards. Oh, no big deal. All right. What I'm going to do now is put two different materials on this. But first, maybe save my scene for laying out my UV keys. Okay. And let's go ahead and apply some materials. So on this one here, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Hypershade. And since we'll probably be using Arnold for rendering, in fact, I know we're gonna be using Arnold for rendering, let's go ahead and add a, under texture nodes, we've got, um, ba -ba 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 -bum. oh, I'm sorry, shader nodes, my bad. So under shader nodes, we're gonna go with standard surface, boom. Now let me make sure that applied. Let's see, select objects. Oh, it didn't, it just created it. All right, so I'm gonna go over here, grab this, in object mode, F8, and I'm going to create, grab this new surface, this new shader, right click it, assign do selection. So now you can see that the keyboard tray looks a little different. Let's go ahead and name this. So let's grab the standard shader and we'll call it keyboard tray. There we go. And now we're gonna go ahead and grab all the keys and this time, let's just go shift right click, or I'm sorry, not shift right click, just right click. And let's assign a new material. And let's go under Arnold shaders, and there is our standard surface, boom. So now when I click on this new standard surface, right click, select objects with material, and there are our keys. So I'm go over here and just say um, keyboard keys. And now we have two separate shaders and we don't have to worry about the fact that these overlap in the UV texture editor because even though these are all in the same all in the same square together it doesn't matter because Maya doesn't see them as being together within the same material. So yes they're both in the one-to-one -one texture space but the tray is assigned to its own material, and the keys are set to their own material, so you don't have to worry about the fact that they're sharing the one-to-one -one space. Okay, And so this is ready to be exported as an FBX or an OBJ, whatever pleases you, and brought into Substance Painter. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab all of this, and I'm going to go ahead and delete history, freeze transformations. And so some of you probably be thinking, oh, but what about the high poly versus the low poly? I mean, this is essentially the low poly we got right here. I think since we're not necessarily worried about face counts for this assignment, you could go ahead and just smooth this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I mean, I'm going to save a version of this. So let's put these in a group. And we'll call this group like keyboard low. And I'm going to duplicate this, and this one will be keyboard high. And I'm just going to turn off the keyboard low. And I don't want you to worry about the whole workflow that we did before, where we had one group named high and one group named low. If you bring in the high poly version of this to begin with, uh, you could just use the high poly to bake the own maps. So you don't necessarily have to have the low poly if you don't want to. So since this assignment doesn't necessarily require it. So I'm going to go ahead and just smooth this. So let's go uh, mesh and, uh, or sorry, I press spacebar, mesh, and I'm going to go in and smooth it. Why am I having a brain fart? Is there mesh tools? Oh, wait, hold on a second. There it is. I don't know what, <laughs> silly brain fart. Actually, I do divisions of one. Let's see how that looks. Actually, it looks really good. 
don't think I necessarily need to have divisions of two. And let's do the same thing to the keys. Shift right click, or um, mesh, smooth. There we go. And they are done. I wonder how many faces this is. Let's go find out. Display, heads up display, poly count. Uh, looks like we're dealing with about 28,000 faces. All right. So you could just grab this whole tray and export it into Substance Painter and start working on it. I'm going to go File, Save Scene As. Uh, whoops. Let's go ahead and save this as Generation 7. High Poly. Save As. All right. Then you are ready to go.